So a lot of people ask me, should I buy SEMrush or should I just buy Uber Suggest? And I think both are great tools. And I think the differences are fairly clear, right? So in today's video, I'm going to answer all of that. I'm going to first of all look at the user experience, just give you an idea how easy or difficult it is to use both platforms. I'm going to look at features, specifically keyword research, competitive analysis, um, backlink data, filtering capabilities, rank tracking, site audits, and anything else that I might not have covered. And finally, we're going to look at pricing. How do they compare on pricing and in terms of value for money for what you get? And ultimately, help you take decision which tool is a better option for you. If you're somebody who's starting out, you're just investing in your SEO efforts right now, and you're early into that journey, I think Uber Suggest is a fantastic option. Very good value for money. SEMrush, I would recommend for like advanced SEOs because there's no doubt about it. It is one of the best SEO tools in the market. Okay. It competes with Ahrefs on this. And I have a separate video for that. I've compared both the top tools in this. But SEMrush is a top tool. It has all of the features. It's covered everything in a lot of detail. And it has a flat monthly pricing without any usage limits as such, right? Which makes it worth it for advanced SEOs. I actually find SEMrush quite a lot of value for money. So if you're an advanced SEO, you know, like really investing in SEO and you're a mature team and you understand the value of these other tools that SEMrush provides, I would definitely recommend SEMrush because Uber Suggest is quite basic. So I don't think for advanced SEOs, I would recommend Uber Suggest at all. It's just, it's very basic and you'd feel a little limited by your work on this. All right, so let's dive into it. So when you log into SEMrush, first of all, I am using SEMrush's Guru account, Guru plan, which costs like $250 a month. I generally feel that's the best plan in terms of the features you get for the price. That's why I use uh, that plan. And with Uber Suggest, I basically use their individual plan. So you can see that on the pricing page. When you log into SEMrush, you basically have all of the tools in here, right on the left, and then everything that you can do on the right. Uber Suggest is similar. They have the tools in here on the left, and then everything you do on the right. Uh, I think the only difference is that Uber Suggest is slightly cleaner. SEMrush might, obviously, they have lots of tips and stuff in here, which is helpful, but yeah, it's just a personal preference. So first we're going to do my... My favorite thing in SEO, which is keyword research. So let's search for a keyword called content briefs. Now, the first thing is that within SEMrush, you can do keyword research for individual keywords, or you can do bulk keyword research. I can have my keywords and then here it's going to do its own research, right? So let's say I'm going to take content briefs and I'm going to take SEO. Okay. I'm going Research. So when you do multiple keyword, you go into the overview. This basically takes the first keyword, or you, know, you can take the second keyword as well. So it's pretty standard. You get everything you need, right? So volume, global volume keyword difficulty. But what's interesting is that they also give you uh, intent information, right? So uh, intent is basically what the user is basically looking for in a particular keyword, and they basically make an assumption about it. So like in this case, it's probably information intent for something like MailChimp or Tendivs, it might have been commercial intent. And so how it really helps is that when you do bulk analysis right, and, and when you export out that data in a spreadsheet, you have intent automatically pre-filled for those keywords. And that just makes it easier to parse through the keywords and find which are the commercial keywords or informational keywords or transactional keywords, right? So I find that pretty helpful. You also get the PPC data, trends. You also get keyword ideas, related keywords, questions, clusters, right? You also get a pretty detailed SERP analysis, which are the top pages that are ranking, how many links do they have, all of that. Fairly standard stuff that you get in a keyword research tool. Now, you can, what I think where it gets more interesting is that when you move on to their keyword magic tool, um, which basically allows you to see things on a macro level for a particular keyword. So let me give you an example of that. All right, so now we're in the keyword magic tool. So 
for the keyword content briefs, right? So what it did is it, it basically broke down all of the keywords based on categories, right? So content brief table, content brief temp, content brief PDF, uploads, right? And it basically buckets them in all of these different topics. So all of the keywords with a template related, you can just go in here, right? And that makes this very easy to see that what are the kind of things people are searching for a particular topic, right? You can parse this by the number of keywords. You can filter this by the number of keywords or by volume, which gives you, I guess, more of an idea that really how big of a cluster this is for you to target. So let's say for template, if I break this down, it's like SEO content brief temp maybe has 110, right? Which you can see here. So I find it very useful. Now, the other thing that you have is, like I said, you have this intent data in here, which is just one of my favorite things about SEMrush's keyword research, right? It just, it automatically adds this there. It may not be 100% accurate, but I've generally seen that they're, they're fairly accurate with their intent data in here. So I think this is pretty helpful. You can, of course, do all sorts of filtering based on volume, or keyword difficulty, Intent, which is very unique to SEMrush, included keywords, other filters like word count and a keyword, density, features, results, all of that. So yeah, that's just like the gist of how keyword research works in SEMrush. Now let's move on to Uber Suggest. So in Uber Suggest, I'm going to search for the same keyword. So it's basically got a section of a keyword research and it has multiple tools and I'll just go right into it. I'm going to search for content briefs. All right. So you can see that Uber Suggest has, I guess, a slightly, or I guess like a very minimalistic and simple interface, right? But that also comes at a cost. You obviously have much lesser features and all of that. But let's just go through it one by one, right? So it gives you, on a high level, the important bits. Search volume, the difficulty, what's the difficulty in ads, and what's the CPC in ads, right? And then... Neil Patel, who's, I think, the founder of Uber Suggest, he's basically giving it down, like, how many backlinks you need for that. I honestly don't look at this because I think it's, it's, I think it's indicative, but sometimes it can be quite wrong as well. So I wouldn't put a lot of attention to it, but I think it's cool. Like, it gives you an idea that how many backlinks you need and what domain authority you need to be able to rank for this keyword. Then it gives you, like, a volume analysis, right? Mobile volume, desktop volume, how it's gone, you know, in the last one year. And then you can see keyword ideas, suggestions they have, related keywords that they have, questions, what is going to be, why briefs are better, prepositions, briefs with pockets, relevant, content brief example, relevant, right? And comparisons, right? Content versus context. So I think it's pretty good. It allows you to really I guess, categorize the keyword research and, and just find the kind of related ideas, right? If I'm looking for questions, I'll just go in here and start looking here, right? It also gives you some content ideas. I don't know where they get these pages from. I, it might be from the SERP, it might be from somewhere else, but they basically give you all of that, how many backlinks they have, how much traffic they might be getting, how many social shares do they have on Facebook, Pinterest, Reddit. So it's pretty cool. But honestly, I've never used this. I might have used this to see what keywords they particularly rank for, right? In here, I can see that these guys rank for content briefs in position number six, content marketing brief. Yeah, through that, I may find ideas, but from a overview perspective, I generally tend to just use this keyword ideas list and then I just go into view all keyword ideas. Now, in this particular keyword research place where you can do bulk keyword research, right? You can filter by volume, difficulty, CPC, filters, what keywords you want, all of that, right? It also has some experimental features. Once you add your site in your project, it can show you which are the keywords that my site might be able to rank for on page one, right? If I click on this one, so this is my website, look at it, and then try to identify if my site can rank for it. I think according to this one, I can rank all of these keywords might be right because I actually have a content brief template on my website. So I think it's pretty good. But this is basically how you can get 
about uh, all sorts of keyword ideas, right? You can also look for keyword ideas by just searching for a website, right? So let's say I put in Zendesk.com. It can show me all of the keywords it ranks for, right? But more on the, I'll cover this in depth in competitive intelligence. But let's just keep towards keyword research, right? Now, what's interesting, what Uber Suggest has that SEMrush doesn't is you can do a visualization of your keywords. So I'm going to do point briefs again. And basically, it gives this beautiful map visualization of the how and the why and the what and the where and the which for all of these particular keywords where you can see volume for each. And this I find super powerful. Okay, this is absolutely amazing. And I believe this is from the issue. I think they, they had a tool or they still have a tool called Answer the Public and they basically integrated that into Uber Suggest. And that was actually known for this kind of visualization. So I find this really cool. You know? And I've taken a very small keyword, like content briefs. It gives me, what is a content brief? How to write a content briefs? Everything related to a question is basically covered in here. And then you can obviously filter by the filters we I earlier showed you. Volume, difficulty, keyword filters, all of that. You can also filter keywords by traffic, right? So this is for when you're doing competitive analysis. You can look for all the keywords that's let's say Zendesk ranks for and then see it based on volume, right? And then find the ideas that make sense. Then another feature that I like is that they have this feature for similar websites. So you can search for competitors for a particular site to identify uh, or do comparative research for other sites. Right? So I want to rank for customer support keywords, let's say, and Zendesk.com has been my target. But I want to see who else is doing great on the SEO site, right? And on Zendesk, obviously shows me Microsoft, WikiHow, TikTok. This is not to be honest, because this is completely irrelevant to Zendesk. I'm going to take something smaller and take my own blog. All right. So for this, it has some sites that I know that I rank, I compete with, and some that like, I don't compete with Apple.com, right? So there's definitely room for improvement here, but it's useful. And then within, within the whole keyword research, you can create keyword lists. If you like a keyword, you can basically create a list. You can do that in SEMrush as well. If you like any keyword, you can basically take in and add to a list, right? So I think it's both on them. So when we compare Uber Suggest versus SEMrush on keywords, I think SEMrush wins primarily because it has much more filters, it has much more data, it has more features to really help you uncover particular keywords. Uber Suggest is not bad. I think it's good, like the volume and everything seems fairly accurate if I were to see for content briefs. So SEMrush for content briefs says it's 260. For Uber Suggest, it says it's different. But I generally felt that SEMrush needs, a, I guess, some catching up to do. It's good if you're like a beginner SEO and everything, but if you're like, if you've got a site and you're like really investing in SEO and everything, I would consider SEMrush, especially in the keyword research. Right? I think SEMrush probably has the best keyword research uh, tool in the market. It's better than HDS, better than Uber Suggest, better than any other tool in the market. So I'm not surprised that SEMrush wins over Uber Suggest on this one. It's, you're comparing the strength of SEMrush versus, I guess, the, the weakness of list. So anyway, my answer is that for keyword research, SEMrush wins, Uber Suggest loses. Now let's compare competitive analysis, right? So I'm going to take Zendesk as an example, right? So I, within SEMrush, there's a segment called comparative research and within there, there's domain overview. So let's start from there, right? So I search for Zendesk.com, gives me an authority of 80, 6 million search traffic, paid search traffic, number of backlinks. But what's interesting, it has these awesome insights and I don't know where they get it from. Engagement metrics, what's their average pages per visit? What's their average visit duration? What's the bounce rate, right? And it's just, this is fantastic information. It might not be 100% accurate, but it gives you an idea how your competitor is performing. 
And you can see distribution of traffic by country. You can see how their organic traffic is growing. Here I can see that their organic traffic is on a bit of a decline. I don't know why. You can see their keywords, history. And I like the distribution based on top three. How many are in top three? How many are in position number four to 10, 11, 20? This is pretty awesome. It has organic keywords, what keywords it ranks for. And then you, know, you can go into the details and, and find all of those keywords. You can see organic position distribution, like what we saw here. This is something, again, I like it. How many keywords do they have based on intent? So informational seems to be like the bulk of it, 55%. You can see branded versus non-branded traffic, right? So you can see about 12% of their traffic is branded. 87% is non-branded. You can see their competitors, how they're in the competitive positioning landscape, advertising research, main paid competitors, ad competitors, what ads they're using, you know, the their backlinks, what backlinks do they have? What's the distribution versus follow versus no follow? What types of backlinks do they have? So it's very comprehensive. This gives you a more both a micro level view of exactly what keywords to target what traffic do they get but also macro view like how are they performing versus the large competitors that they have right but they go a step further with their competitive research so you can do some very solid competitive analysis so let's say i want to compare it with healthscout.com which is another customer support tool that zendesk competes with you can see, you can compare them at authority, organic traffic, keywords, all of that, traffic share. Like this is super powerful when you're looking at things from a very high level. And then you can do a bunch of other things. You can also do five competitors analysis if you want to. Now let's look at their traffic analytics within competitive research. First of all, when you go into traffic analytics, you see what I just showed you, you know, in terms of visits, unique visitors, page per visit, average visit duration, like this is amazing information. You can see that health card has a very high bounce rate. Now you can also compare them on top pages, traffic journey, audience, right? Let's have a look at that. Okay, so it seems like it's locked behind a paid product. Can't see it, but anyway, they, they have that. Now, what's interesting is that you can go a little bit higher level and strategic and see it from a market standpoint. All right, so this is what their market explorer looks like, right? Now, this is super useful if you're a CMO, head of marketing, uh, founder, CEO, because it gives you an idea of a very good comparative analysis that what's the market share, what's the market traffic like, what's the market traffic cost, total addressable market, how does the quadrant look like? And I think this is... Pretty interesting to look at when you got to go deep into it. Now, the other thing that I also like about <clears throat> SEMrush's competitive research is that it goes macro, but it also goes micro. It gives you very specific information, right? So they've got a tool called Keyword Gap Analysis, which allows you to compare <clears throat> your domain with a competitor's domain and see what keywords your competitor is ranking for that you're not ranking for. And this is a great strategy to just find opportunities to create more content that's working for your competitors, right? And similarly, they also have a backlink gap analysis that allows you to see what domains link to your competitor and not to you, right? And then you can reach out to them and, and figure things out. And, and so this is super powerful for SEO teams so that you can get more customers and all of that, right? And, and I think to summarize, like the competitive research within... SEMrush is very comprehensive. You get more macro level trend, how the market is, how big the market is, and what's the audience size, what's the traffic, page engagement metrics, but more micro level stuff like what keywords your competitor ranks for, what backlinks do they get, and all of that. Now let's look at Uber Suggestors comparative research, right? So the first is you go into traffic estimation and then you put in the domain. So I put in Zendesk again, and so it gives me all of the organic keywords it ranks for, it's monthly traffic, domain authority, backlinks. It gives me an organic traffic view over time, keywords over time, 
and what are their top pages and then i can just go in look at their individual pages and i can see what backlinks do they have social shares all of that what keywords they rank for and i can go in and basically do like a very deep research on like exact keywords and and basically filter out the keywords i want to rank for then you can also look at the top pages by traffic for zendesk like i said you can see that here or it's cold calling right and then you can see all of the keywords they rank for within here, right? So what is cold calling, cold call means, cold caller, all of that, right? You can look at the next list of keywords, cold call, cold caller. So this is pretty helpful and it's actually pretty fast as well. And then Neil Patel comes in and gives an you know, estimate on the visits and everything. This is pretty good for SEO teams, I'd say. But I'm afraid this is basically it in terms of the competitive research side. Like Uber Suggest is primarily an SEO tool, especially if you want to understand what links does a particular domain rank for, what keywords does it, sorry, what keywords does it rank for, what backlinks do they have, all of that. For that, it can give you the data, but nothing beyond that, which is good and bad. I think good is that it, it keeps people focused, right? So you can just go in, look at the keywords. You can just go in, look at the backlinks, right? But that's it, right? But the, I guess the bad thing is that you're limited. So to do an analysis between Uber suggestions, SEMrush, I think SEMrush's comparative analysis is much more advanced, right? Than Uber suggest at the cost of making the user interface slightly complex, right? So if you have to find something, there's a lot of things for a beginner. But if you're like a slightly experienced SEO, I don't think you should have any problem. While Uber suggests has relatively much lesser comparative analysis features, it's great for beginners. It's great for people who are just starting out, trying to understand. It doesn't complicate. It's fast. It keeps the information minimal and focused. So if you're somebody like that, I think for that, the comparative research is fairly decent Uber suggests. But I think... Again, Sam Rush wins the round. I think they're way ahead in terms of comparative research. The next thing we're going to look at is <clears throat> backlinks, the backlink data and, and everything you can do within these two tools related to link building, right? So <clears throat> when you search for a domain, domain's backlinks, you basically go into backlink analytics in SEMrush. And then it gives you all of this data, right? Referring domains, what backlinks, monthly visits, all of that. Which are the, how reputable is this domain? Authority score trend, how the backlinks have grown. What are like the top anchors? This is very helpful. What categories of like where the backlinks are coming from? Like they seems to get, they seem to get a lot of backlinks from business domains and arts domains, weirdly, right? And they give you like very comprehensive data, right? Link attributes, backlink type, link profile distribution, all of that. But they also have like really specific tools within this, right? You can do a backlink analysis versus a competitor and identify what keywords you don't rank for that your competitor, sorry, what pages has your competitor got a backlink from that you haven't. And then you can go deep into each of these backlinks and identify like which backlinks are of interest. So let me show you that. You can see here, there's like this table where you can see all of the backlinks and zillion filters to put in, right? So if you want to see new backlinks, you can do that. You can see backlinks in a particular period. You can see backlink types. You can also restrict them by just maybe one backlink per domain. You can see the link placement. Is it on the in the content, in the header, photo, site, right? This is actually very useful. You can see referral page platform you can have a lot of other filters a particular domain if you want to see if they have a backlink from new york times all of that right so this is very comprehensive backlink <clears throat> reporting and you can there's a lot more that i can go into they've got a link building tool you can do a backlink audit and basically within their link building tool you can send emails and you can have link building in-house and one tools this there's a lot of aspects covered related to backlinks in SEMrush. Now let's look at Uber Suggest. So 
within Uber Suggest, there's a section called backlinks, right? And we're going to look at the backlinks overview for Zendesk again. So first of all, it gives you the domain authority, referring domains, number of backlinks, how the backlinks have grown over time, backlinks based on our domain authority. And then you've got certain filters, not as many as SEMrush, but, but certain filters, right? So you can see backlinks from a particular domain with a particular name. You can see follow, no follow links. You can restrict them by one link per domain. And yeah, like, you know, it gives you all of that domain authority, page authority, spam score, anchor text, all of that, right? So this is, if you want to do research on if your competitors have backlinks and where have they gotten it from. The second aspect is backlink opportunity. So this is where you can see, you can compare your domain and another domain in terms of backlinks. So let me just show you. I'm going to take health card. I'm going to search it. And now this, what this is going to do is it's going to find all of the websites that link to your competitors, but not to Zendesk.com. Very nifty feature. So there you go. These are all the backlinks, right? I do miss the fact that they don't really have filters in here, right? If I want to filter by name or something, right? Or by particular domain authority and I don't want everything. That's unfortunately not here. But yeah, like they can do that. And that's the extent of the backlinks. So to compare SEMrush versus, I think SEMrush has a much more sophisticated backlink tool, right? They give you very in-depth analytics. And I think probably their strength is the amount of filters you can put within SEMrush to find the kind of backlinks you're looking for. Uber suggests this backlink tool is rather basic, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Again, it's the difference between this is great for newbies. This is great for beginners. Uber suggests backlink data covers the most important use cases, which maybe have 80% of the impact, but like the 20% where things can make your life easier, that's the bit they don't have. And I don't think beginners have to care much about that. But within SEMrush, it's great for like advanced SEOs because it has pretty much everything you need, all tools. And you can basically have everything related to link building in-house in one tool, which I don't think any other tool in the market does that, not even HREFs. Like you can't send emails and everything from their platform. So I think, again, SEMrush wins this round versus Uber Suggest, just because they just have way more features and way more filters and I guess way more data. But I don't, I wouldn't say Uber Suggest is bad. I think they've still covered the most important aspects. It's just meant for a different audience altogether. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at within features is site audit, right? So you can run a site audit in here in SEMrush. Let, let me just go in here and have a look. When you run a site audit in SEMrush, this is what it finds. Like a very comprehensive report, site health, crawl pages, warnings, notices, errors, what are the top issues? And then you can dive in deep into it and, and figure things out. Now with an Uber suggest, you can find site audit in here. So this is a site audit for my own site. Again, it gives you an on-page SEO score, traffic, keywords, backlinks. Pages discovered, issues found, right? And you can go into each of these issues. Let's say five pages have low word count. So I'm going to go in here. And then you can just make changes however you want, right? So it's fairly basic versus what SEMrush has, right? But again, it's meant for simplicity and it's meant for beginners. And it has probably the more important bits in here. But I think site audits require you to go deep into it, right? Otherwise, an audit is doesn't make sense. So from that perspective, I just feel Uber suggests site audits is it's okay. I, I wouldn't recommend doing an audit with this, but SEMrush's audit is fantastic. So yeah, and in, in this case again, SEMrush wins over Uber suggest. Let's look at the rank tracking bit. So within SEMrush, the rank tracking, I love the dashboards of it, right? You can see ranking distribution in top one to three, four to 10. I really like this bit, how you can distribute it based on top three, 
four to ten, eleven to twenty. Which are the keywords that have the positive impact? Which are the top keywords? You can have tags. You can compare it with your competitors. You can see sub features, any cannibalized pages, all of that. Uber suggests rank tracking is simpler, but it's actually pretty decent. So these are all my keywords. You can see their change, how they've moved. You can see your average position, right? And I really like this metric because I tend to hold by this, right? That next month I want to be lower than this, right? But it seems like I, I skipped that. It breaks it down in top three, top 10, top 100. So I guess 25% of my keywords are in top three, which is great. And it's basically this, right? Like fairly basic. You can see it by last 30 days, two weeks, three months, two months, 12 months for all time. And I think it's pretty solid. It's pretty great in terms of like knowing exactly that you need and not getting diverted by the other details of rank tracking. And also gives you opportunities, right? So it, it also identifies that there are certain pages that, you know, I might be ranking for certain keywords that I'm not tracking in my rank tracker and it might be worth optimizing those pages, which is useful. And to be honest, sometimes the suggestions are pretty good, but sometimes they're like, whatever. So yeah, like, I think on the rank tracking side, I would say it's a tie because I like SEMrush's rank tracking. I also like Uber suggest rank tracking because I think SEMrush's is too detailed, right? Again, meant for bigger businesses. But I don't, I think the core opportunities within rank tracking, right, are, are really this. What's the average position, how they're doing in terms of top three, top 10, top 100, and how they're doing overall. And I think in both cases, I, I feel it's just a different approach, but I like them both. All right, the, the last thing we're going to look at is pricing. So SEMrush starts at $130 per month. And obviously, I use the Guru plan, which is at $250 per month. And basically, you, you get more limits increasing, right? Like more keywords to add to your rank tracker, more results per report, all of that. But what I like about SEMrush's plans are that this is like unlimited usage, obviously based on fair usage policy, but it's unlimited, right? So there's a flat monthly cost and and that is what it is always going to be, right? Uber suggest is much cheaper than SEMrush, right? So I use their individual plan, which is $12 per month, okay? The business plan, and again, with the $12 a month plan, you get 150 searches per day, which is more than enough you get 125 tracked keywords per domain it's probably less and you, know, you get one user and everything right but even if you want more you can get it for 20 dollars per month but what's interesting is that i don't know how long they're going to keep it they also have a lifetime offer right so for 120 dollars you can get uber suggest forever right which makes it super super affordable right so like in terms of value for money like, even though SEMrush has much more features and is a much more mature product than Uber Suggest, considering the price that Uber Suggest costs, I think it's pretty worth it. Like, for $12 a month, you get fairly accurate data, pretty good rank tracking, pretty good keyword analysis, pretty good backlink analysis. And I think it's great for beginners. I guess the ultimate question comes should you buy SEMrush or should you buy Uber Suggest, right? And I think. The differences are fairly clear, right? So on all aspects, apart from pricing and rank tracking, SEMrush is better than Uber suggest, hands down. SEMrush is the best tool, but it is 10 times more expensive than Uber suggest. okay? I guess the question is on you, right? If you're somebody who's a beginner, who's starting out in SEO or is early in the SEO journey and just needs the basic details and don't want to get complicated by it, or if you're limited by budget in investing in these SEO tools, Uber Suggest is one of the most affordable options out there, most value for money, a very good set of tools, even though not a lot. And I would recommend you to go with Uber Suggest if you're a beginner. If you're an advanced person, definitely go for SEMrush. I don't think Uber Suggest is right for you, right? So that's it. That's my comparison between SEMrush versus Uber Suggest. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, 
please drop them in the comments and I will answer them for you. I've been using both tools for a while and uh, yeah, I like them both. I think they're great. Uh, you know, again, if you have any questions, I can answer them. And if you found this video helpful, I have one quick favor. Uh, if you're planning to buy Ahrefs or Uber Suggest, I would urge you to consider buying using my affiliate links below in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra, but I will get a small cut which helps fund these video creation efforts and in helping you make the best software decisions, right? So I'd be very grateful if you do that. And as usual, if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe to our channel. We create a lot of software review and comparison videos. You can go through our history. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day.